Cavalcade of America. Starring Oscar Homolka in Honest John Gaminsky and the 13 Uncle Sam. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. This is Bill Hamilton. Among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry is neoprene rubber. Roofers, the men who repair and put new roofs on houses, spend as much as $100 a year on shoes. Finally, one alert manufacturer designed a shoe that really saves money for roofers. The upper is made of reinforced cowhide. The crepe soles are of DuPont neoprene. The reason is neoprene wears and wears. And of course, neoprene resists hot tar and asphalt too. Structural steel workers and men who install television aerials will also find these shoes ideal for safety, comfort, and economy. Those of you who buy work shoes will benefit by looking for shoes that have soles made of neoprene, one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. With Oscar Homolka as Honest John Gaminsky, here is Honest John Gaminsky and the 13 Uncle Sam. Whenever the boys at party headquarters sit around yapping and passing the word, sooner or later the talk gets around to Honest John Gaminsky and the 13 Uncle Sam's. There's a lot of versions of the story, but mine's the right one. And seeing I was Honest John's private secretary and personal bodyguard, I ought to know the facts. I guess you know who Honest John was. Our party boss and the slickest politician this town ever saw. Boy, we had it good in them days. John, will you do me a favor? I want the contract to build that new school. Can you fix it for me? Sure. What kind of cement do you use? Oh, the best. It's no good. My brother-in-law says best. Oh, well, in that case, I'll use his. Sure. Now, will you fix it? What kind of compensation insurance you carry? Uh, I'll have to look that up. Whatever you got, my son can sell you something better. A little more expensive, maybe, but better. Oh, now, wait a minute, John. Don't hold me up on everything. If you don't want the contract, drop dead. I got an uncle who's an undertaker. Yes, sir, we sure had it good. Then Gaminsky gets tangled up with these here 13 Uncle Sams. And that's the end of them. Kaput. Finished. Oh, I could bawl every time I think of it. About a year and a half ago, it started just before our local elections. How do you like that shot, Stevie? Swell, boss. Now I think I play nine ball in side pocket. Go. Go. It's his honor, the mayor. John. Have you seen today's paper? Shh, I'm playing the nine ball inside pocket. Listen to this speech that was made last night at the Betterment League. Ah, made it! Listen, John. Boss Kaminsky's political machine is a blight on and a menace to good government in this city and must be destroyed. <laughs> For 20 years now, they are going to destroy Honest John. <laughs> Fat chance, huh, Stevie? Fat chance is right, boss. Read the rest of speech, holler. I need laughs. Well, I'm glad you think it's funny, John. But well, as long as they talk about me, I don't care what they say. Read. Well, here's something about you. Honest John is the living replica of the boss... Wait a minute. Replica? Is that dirty? It means uh, you're like somebody else. Like who? Boss Tweed, he says. Uh, is that the worst he can think of to say? I've been called pig with my feet in trot. <laughs> Octopus who squeezes public. And a leopard who cannot change his stripes. <laughs> I wish you'd be serious about this, John. We've been attacked more this year than I can ever remember. Would you care what they say about me? You are the one who's running for office. Well, they're saying plenty about me, too. And I don't like it. Every election they say plenty. They murder us. They wipe us out. They cut us in little pieces like hamburger. <laughs> Only thing wrong, we win. <laughs> you see me? 
Yeah, we win this time, too, boss. Uh, Stevie say we win too, Holler. See? Now I bank number two ball in corner pocket. Stop playing a minute, John, please. I don't think you realize how much opposition the Reform Party is lining up against us. They've got most of the business people. They've got the Betterment League, the church people. And what worries me most of all, they've got the union. Union people get one vote like everybody else. The veterans are against us, too. It looks like we, we weren't patriotic or something. Yeah, yeah, patriotic. They've been saying that about us a lot, you know. All right, all right. Look, Mr. Holler, if you worry because nobody thinks you've got patriotism, I fix it. Stevie. Yeah, boss? They're going to make Mr. Holler a patriot. Huh? I want you to dig up 12 very tall, skinny guys who want to make a buck. Huh? Take those 12 guys to some place where they're in costumes. They're in 12 Uncle Sam suits. Got it, Stevie? Uh, dress these skinny Joes like Uncle Sam? Is that what you mean, boss? Yeah, that's what I mean, Stevie. Then on each Uncle Sam, put the sign saying, I'm voting for J.J. Holler. Then turn them loose. I got you, boss. You're not serious about this stunt, are you? Sure. And they make you a patriot. I think it's swell publicity, Mr. Holler. Rather obvious, isn't it? Well, that's what's good about it. Go ahead, Stevie. I want them red, white, and blue bumps on the street by tomorrow morning. Okay, boss. And, Stevie, yes? remember, no drunk. I don't think people like to see Uncle Sam plastered. Okay, boss. It's going to take more than gags like this to swing this election, John. Do you realize how many of our old supporters are turning against us? Ah, uh, you should be an old woman and knit mitt. Look at that shot. John, you know who made that speech I was just reading to you? What difference? It'd make a difference to me if I had done as much for anybody as you have for Joe Larkin. And he made that kind of a speech about me. Joe Larkin made that speech? Joe Larkin? It's right here in the paper. Joe, do that to me? It sure surprised me. I thought he was practically engaged to your daughter. After all I done for Joe, I lent him money for college so he could be lawyer. I hope he paid you back, because the way he talks here, you'll never get it. Oh, Joe paid back, but I cannot believe he would do this. Hey, boss, I forgot to ask you something. Now what? You want whiskers on them, Uncle Sam's? <laughs> So, I get me 12 Uncle Sam's, and I get them out there. All right, Sam number 10 will cover Main Street between 1st and 4th. Okay. Sam number 11, the post office, and yeah. Uncle Sam 12 takes a railroad station. Oh, Got yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Now, is there any questions? Yeah. Where do we get the dough? When you turn in the suits, providing they're intact. No hocking them toppers. Anything else? Yeah. How do I keep these pants up? They're too big. Great. All we need is for you to lose your jeans in the middle of Monument Square. <laughs> Here, take my belt and now get moving. And remember, no drinking, no talking dirty, and especially no smoking. There's deposits on them beards. Hit the road. Then later, I drive Honest John home for supper like I do every night. No matter how busy John is, supper's one time he always goes home so he can have it with his daughter. What's wrong with your appetite tonight, Papa? Mary, you remember when you was a little girl how I tell you no matter what I do, I do it because it's best for you? I remember, Papa. Well, I've got to do something now that is so best for you, you're probably going to hate me. What's wrong, Papa? I found out something about Joe Larkin today. Oh? He's no good. I don't want you to ever see him again, Mary. Papa, I haven't seen Joe for almost a month now. You mean he double-crossed you, too? He didn't double-cross me. We quarreled. What about? What did he do? Nothing, Papa. It doesn't matter. If he was bad to you, I'd kill him. Well, he wasn't bad, Papa. It was just that... What, Mary? It was about you, Papa. How do you mean? Joe likes you very much. Yeah, he says crazy about me. Personally, I mean. But he doesn't agree with the things you do in politics. And when he said he was coming out against you and Mr. Holler, I told him I'd never see him again if he did. Mary, it's good you speak up for Papa. 
But I do not want you to be unhappy. Oh, it wasn't just his coming out against you. It was the reasons he did it for. You mean I'm a replica, huh? I'm just furious with him for that speech he made yesterday. Well, we won't lose any more sleep over Joe Larkin, Mary, huh? He's a punk and we forget about him. All right, Papa. Now eat, then. You eat. Well, okay. We both eat. <laughs> hey, boy, <laughs> guess who's out there? Joe Larkin. What? Joe Larkin? He's got some nerve to want to see me. He wants to see Mary. He ain't gonna. He's gonna see me long enough for me to throw him out personally. Maybe you better let me see him, Papa. You two might fight. Might fight? Of course we fight. You stay there with Stevie. Please don't get in any trouble, Papa. Please, Papa. Hello, Mr. Kaminsky. Get out of my house. I'd like to see Mary if I could. Get out of my house. I'm sorry you feel this way, Mr. Kaminsky. Now, who else would I feel, you dirty, double-crossing replica? Well, I didn't enjoy making that speech. Now, what do you make then? How could you do a thing like that to me? Who's been like father to you almost? Listen, Mr. Kaminsky. Whatever you've done for me personally, and it's been plenty, doesn't count for a thing alongside the damage that greedy machine of yours has done to this town. We don't think it's good for this town. You run it for the benefit of your machine. Now, so what? If the other side wins around the town for themselves. We'll run it for the people, all the people. And the people, fooey. Yeah. Mr. Gaminsky, I remember a composition we had to write when I was in grammar school. A great American it had to be called. I can still remember the first line of mine. Alderman John Kaminsky is a great American because he loves people. Ah. It was all about what a great public servant you were because you thought more of the public good than you did of your own. Mm. It was pretty flowery stuff, but I meant every word of it. Ah. Well, who's changed since I was 14, Mr. Kaminsky? Have I or have you? Well, I dress like I am as I always was. I can't believe that in those days you'd have backed a crook like Holler. Well, that care what Holler is like as long as he can get elected. This is one time he won't, Mr. Kaminsky. I don't care how many Uncle Sams you have running around advertising him. <laughs> Few trick, huh? It made me kind of sick. Using old Mr. Whiskers as a sandwich man for haulers like having Santa Claus shill for a coach dancer. Uh, so what? So maybe I'm sentimental, but I don't think patriotism is anything to kid. Not these days. That's why I'm not on your side anymore, Mr. Gaminsky. You're a swell guy personally, but you're a pretty rotten citizen. You see. And you know I'm right. You and your outfit have taken this town over lock, stock, and barrel. Well, it's politics, ain't it? Not my kind. And I don't see how it can be yours, Mr. Gaminsky. Not after what this country has done for you. Nobody did nothing for me. I didn't do myself. I came from old country without penny. Now I'm a successful man. Who's for The country's? No, mine. That's your opinion. It's my opinion. Those of you talk too much. You're not my friend no more. Get out. Go. Okay, Mr. Gaminsky. I'll see you at the polls. We beat your brains out election day. I wouldn't be too sure. And you better tell your relatives to be looking for new jobs, including your Uncle Sam. <laughs> what happens next, I ain't vouching for personally, because I wasn't there. But Honest John says it happened, and if Honest John says it happened, I guess it did happen, because I never knew John to tell no lies except during a campaign, and that don't count. So, either it happened or the boss had himself a mighty peculiar dream. You tell me. Anyway, later that same night, the boss and me are sitting in his living room playing pinochle. I don't think I play no more tonight, Stevie. Okay, boss. Time to hit that hay anyhow. Punk. Me? I'm still thinking of that punk, Joe. Want me to muss him up a bit for your boss? I don't need you to muss nobody up for me. Well, I'm only trying to be friendly. What do I care with a punk kid like that think about me? Well, if you don't want me no more, I think I'll lock the door and go to bed. <sighs> good night, boss. What? I said good night. Well, don't stand there talking my head off. Go to bed. I'm on my way. So I lock the joint up and go to bed. I read about three pages out of a comic book, and before you can say Dick Tracy, I'm asleep. Meantime, 
Honest John is sitting downstairs staring at the fire in the fireplace. Maybe he dozes off and maybe he don't. Anyway, the next thing the boss knows, there's somebody in the room with him. Hello, John. Who are you? Don't you know me, John? I thought everybody knew this rig of mine and these chin whiskers. I'm Uncle Sam. Oh, you're one of the guys Stevie hire. You look pretty good, too. Good swell outfit. Thank you, John. What'd you come here for? What's the matter? Need dough? <laughs> Seems to me I always need dough. Well, how much you want? Oh, around $42 billion this year. What? Didn't Steve tell you guys not to drink? I ain't been drinking tonight, John. Well, then you're not. $42 billion. Yeah, things have gone up, John. Living's mighty high. Look, Uncle, you go home and have a nice sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. Well, why don't you go home, I said. Because I want to talk to you, John Jaminski. How do you get in here, anyhow? Walk through the door? I told Stevie to lock it. He did. He didn't, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna lock it after you. You're leaving. I'll kill Stevie for this. For getting the locked door and crazy nut just walk in on me. I told you it was locked. Well, then how you get in? I told you. Through the door. But how if it's locked? Through the door, I said. Not the doorway. What do you mean? I'll show you. Face the door. Now, we take one step, and we're through the door. That's what you call American know-how, John. Who are you, anyhow? I told you. I'm your Uncle Sam, nephew. What do you want? Just come with me. Listening to Oscar Homolka in Honest John Gaminsky and the Thirteen Uncle Sam, an original radio play on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Now, mind you, I ain't saying that tall, skinny guy that appeared in Gaminsky's house was Uncle Sam. It was Boss Gaminsky seen him, not me. Or maybe he dreamed them. All I know, it certainly was no one of them 12 seedy-looking Sams I hired. If any of them could walk through a locked door like this fellow, they wouldn't be working for me for no five bucks a day. They'd be walking in and out of bank doors all night long. Anyway, Honest John and this strange guy are standing together in the dark night. Look, it's snowing. Feel that wind. I ain't felt nothing like this since I was a kid in the old country. You remember that, do you? I never forget it. I didn't have coats. I was never warm all winter long. I feel just like that now. Like I never get warm. Want to go in this house over here? Where are we? I've seen this street someplace. Not much of a neighborhood, is it, John? It's not fit for a pig. Pigs don't live here. Just people. Wait a minute. I've been in this place before. I know that house there. There's a lamp on inside. Late for folks to be awake. Look. Look in the window. There's whole family working. They weaving. Whole family weaving. Even children. Look, that little boy in corner can hardly stay awake, but he weaving too. How do you know they're weaving, John? You think I don't know weaving when I see it? When I was a kid, I had to stay up night after night and weave and weave. Whole family had to work all day and night or be starved. We worked just like that family in there. I was no bigger than that poor little boy. When... Do you recognize that boy, John? God in heaven. It's me. There is my brothers and sisters. And there is mama and papa. 
Look how tired they look. I should think so. Fourteen hours a day, seven days a week, weaving and weaving. But no, I got money. I help my mama and papa. Come, come, come on in house. What house, John? What is it, Joe? What's right here? That house went a long time ago, John. It was shelled to pieces in the First World War. But you ought to remember it now and then. Come on, John. These wicked people ever have to live like that. How did you ever improve things? We come to America naturally. Oh, and that was better. Sure. In America, we had chance. Could try any kind of work we wanted. Didn't have to be weavers always like in old country. If you Uncle Sam, you ought to know that. Did your whole family come over? All but my oldest brother. He makes speech in public square against government, and they put him in jail. He died there. Where did music come from? From that church there, I guess. Oh, there. I've seen that before, too. But not in old country. That is St. Stanislaus Church downtown. Let's go in. He's waiting, going on. Nice looking young couple, ain't they? I've seen them before, too. Hey! Guess who that is getting married? Who? Me! John Zaminsky! And look! My wife! Ain't she beautiful? You were lucky to get a girl like that, John. Oh, lucky in half. You know, her people been long time in this country. And when I know her first, I think maybe she not like me because I'm foreigner. I tell her that one day, and she laughs. She says, everybody is just as good as everybody else in America. And I all of a sudden realize how wonderful it is to be free and equal to everybody else. <laughs> Only I never be as good as she is. <laughs> That's one place constitution is wrong. <laughs> Oh, look how beautiful she is. Now she's gone. Would you have married the same kind of girl if you'd stayed in the old country? You're crazy. She was professor's daughter. How were you fixed for money when you married? I had no money, but I had jobs. And all the time, I'm going to free school at night. And after a long time, I get to be a lawyer. Then I go into politics. How did you happen to do that? Hmm. It was my wife's idea. See, she thought I could do a lot of good for people. Did you, John? I guess maybe at first. Then she die, and I get kind of mixed up what is good for people and what isn't. Finally, I stop worrying about anything except what is good for me. Do you think you have done what's good for yourself, John? Listen, Mr. Uncle Sam, I run this town like I owned it. How could I do better than that? Hey, where this big barbed wire fence come from? I don't remember this. You don't remember this because it hasn't happened yet. You mean someday this fence gonna be here? That depends on you, John. Where are all those people marching with the picks and shovels? They're going to do even harder work than weaving. They're going to dig graves. What is this place? It's a concentration camp. Where are we? In America. In your hometown. You are not Uncle Sam. We don't have no concentration camps here. <laughs> Wherever the rights of the people are forgotten, wherever the good of the many is sacrificed for the benefit of the few, wherever the law is twisted or bought or made corrupt for the sake of personal or party power, democracy can die. And the dictator and the secret police and the concentration camp can come. Remember this, nephew. Look, that old man, they are beating him to death. There's something about him they don't approve of, Sam. His church, or his race, or the way he thinks. 
Look closer. See who that old man is. It's me. God give us help. It's me. Remember, John, the end is only the sum of the means. They're killing me. They're killing me. Uncle Sam, where are you? Why? I'm home. Mary? Yes? Phoebe, everybody, come down here, everybody. All right, I'm coming. What is it, Papa? What's the matter, boy? What happened, Papa? I'm telephone. Hello, Joe. Joe Larkin? Say, how would you... You reform party like a new campaign manager. What? A good one. The best there is, me, honest John Gaminsky himself. <laughs> that was that. He was ruined. Done for. You see what I mean? Stark, raven, nuts. And here was the greatest politician I ever saw. It was tragic. Especially when Gaminsky's reform party beat it so bad. Hamilton speaking for DuPont. This spring, Americans in more than 2,000 communities will join in local clean-up, paint-up, fix-up campaigns. Since 1912, many American cities and towns have spruced themselves up in this way. For example, Fort Collins, Colorado, which has a population of 12,500, made more than 10,000 improvements last spring. More than 840,000 improvements to buildings and property were made in Louisville, Kentucky. And across the nation, millions of improvements will be made this year. Vacant lots will be cleared, alleys will be tidied up, and shabby buildings will be repainted. These campaigns are a wonderful example of democracy at work. Officials, civic leaders, businessmen, homeowners, school children, everyone pitches in to help get the job done. If you've ever worked in a clean-up, paint-up, fix-up campaign in your own community, you know the feeling of accomplishment and pride it gives. One retired businessman heading the campaign in his town phrased it this way. He said, this city has been good to me. It gave me my education, my livelihood, and I want the coming generations to have an equal chance, a democratic chance in a city that is clean and tidy, unquote. A clean town is a more pleasant, more attractive town. It is pleasanter for those who live in it, more attractive for those who visit it, and it's bound to be a healthier town. Because of the part they play in America's annual clean-up, paint-up, fix-up campaign is another reason why DuPont 40 outside White House paint, Dulux trim and trellis finishes, and other DuPont paint products merit their name as DuPont Better Things for Better Living through chemistry. Tonight's original cavalcade play, Honest John Gaminsky and the Thirteen Uncle Sams, was written by Frank Gabrielson. In the cast with Oscar Homolka, you heard John Gibson as Stevie and Bill Adams as Uncle Sam. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Cavalcade will present next week the lovely star of stage and screen, Dorothy McGuire in Lady on a Mission, an exciting drama of suspense set in Paris during the French Revolution. Be sure to listen. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller, comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York, and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.